My name is Dr. Stanley Zeffler, and I'm the deputy editor for the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. And I'm here with Dr. Michael Wexler, who's a um, professor of medicine at the uh, National Jewish Health and also the University of Colorado uh, Denver School of Medicine. And we're here to review an article uh, that he's the lead author in in the October issue of the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. And this uh, particular report uh, relates to brachial thermoplasty and its safety and efficacy in the management of severe persistent asthma. And this is a long-term follow-up study. Dr. Wexler, could you give us an overview of the study and some of the key messages that came from this report? So this is a post-approval long-term study of the efficacy of bronchial thermoplasty in the management of patients with moderate to severe persistent asthma. This is a follow-up of the one-year ER2 pivotal trial that led to the approval of bronchial thermoplasty in management of asthma. And what we did was we examined the outcomes of patients who underwent bronchial thermoplasty and followed them out to five years. In the pivotal study, what was demonstrated was that at the end of one year, there was a significant reduction in exacerbations in patients treated with bronchial thermoplasty compared to those who received a sham control thermoplasty treatment. Um, what we've demonstrated here is that the benefit in terms of reduction in exacerbations was maintained out to five years. In the patients who received bronchial thermoplasty, now out to five years, there's a persistent reduction in both in terms of the rate of exacerbations um, as well as in terms of the number of patients who experienced exacerbations out to five years. Could you um, discuss a little bit about the clinical application of this technique and what would be the advantages and limitations in the clinical setting? Yeah, so um, bronchial thermoplasty is a safe and effective therapy uh, for the management of patients with severe asthma. Um, in terms of uh, the advantages, well, it's been demonstrated to be effective in terms of reducing exacerbations in patients who are poorly controlled on inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta agonists. Um, and it's been shown to reduce exacerbations. It's been shown to reduce emergency room visits. It's also been shown now over a five-year period to uh, d to allow for a significant reduction in inhaled corticosteroid dosing. Um, also, what we've demonstrated is that there are no significant radi radiologic uh, abnormalities demonstrated in patients who receive this therapy out to five years. In terms of uh, disadvantages, well, this is a procedure, and uh, you need to have patients who are willing to undergo a procedure for the management of their, his or her asthma. Uh, on top of that, because these patients have moderate severe asthma and twitchy airways, uh, undergoing a bronchoscopy in these patients is uh, not without risk. Uh, in the AIR-2 trial, we demonstrated that there was a small uh, risk of an asthma exacerbation following this procedure, but that's been mitigated in the, the um, post-approval setting by the judicious use of systemic steroids as prophylactic axis, and also by not doing this procedure in patients who have uh, recently had asthma exacerbations or recent respiratory tract infections. Very good. Um, what would you say in terms of experience with this procedure, what would be the ideal patient that would be most likely to benefit from getting this procedure? So, um, I think that uh, patients who are poorly controlled on inhaled steroids and long-acting beta agonists are the best candidates for this therapy. And certainly, I would not want to do this procedure in patients who've had recent exacerbations or recent respiratory tract infections. However, patients who uh, have not responded to omalizumab or uh, who may not be tolerant to or may not qualify for omalizumab may be a good candidate as well. I think that uh, the 
patients who are willing to undergo a procedure um, and uh, are clinically somewhat stable from their asthma but overall poorly controlled are probably the best candidates for this bronchial thermoplasty procedure. At this point in time, um, based on the experience over the last five years and, and a bit longer, uh, is this the type of procedure that should be recommended in the national and global asthma guidelines? Um, yes, I certainly do think that bronchothermoplasty is ready to be incorporated into the national guidelines and I think that payers as well should uh, consider this a bona fide viable option for patients with severe asthma. Both in the pivotal trial and now in the long-term follow-up of these uh, patients who have received bronchial thermoplasty, we've demonstrated that there is a significant reduction in exacerbations, an improvement in asthma-related quality of life and reduction in emergency room visits with uh, overall improvement in uh, both asthma symptoms while reducing inhaled corticosteroids. I think that uh, in terms of uh, opportunities to intervene in patients with moderate severe asthma, there aren't many different options that patients have once they are remain poorly controlled on inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta agonists. We need new options. This is a bona fide uh, proven option that now has long-term safety and efficacy uh, results. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wexler, for your uh, summary of this report and, and also for the uh, upcoming report in the journal. As I mentioned before, uh, the full report will be available in the October 2013 issue of the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology.